So today we're going to go through and look at one of my favorite things, uh, general reporting. Uh, so if you come to the top menu or hamburger menu, sometimes it's called, you can come down to my reports. And this is going to be where you're going to go through and be building reports and looking at reports that have been saved or shared with you. So we'll start with saved reports. From here, you can go through and you can do um, a few things. Select a report. You can come here and you can export it to Excel, to Word. Um, if you open this cog wheel right here, that'll pull you up, pull you up to the report builder, and you can go through and you can edit all the reports. Uh, you can also do auto reports. So, say I want to go through and get this weekly on every Monday evening, I can go through and I can save it like that. And you can do multiple days of the week. You can do monthly whatever days you want. Uh, it's really, really nice to be able to go through and get those uh, in your email. You can also archive the report from here. And if you want, you can go through and share the report. And you would be just move the person's name over here and it will be shared with them. So this is your saved reports. You can also come through and you can star, you can star your report, which the little things in my way See if I can get this a little bit. Sorry, report. There you go. And from there, whenever you come to your My Reports, you can find this that report that you've already favorited. So we'll go into the report builder. I do want to build a few different reports. Uh, first is the a basic project report. So I'm not clicked on the list of projects. There is a list, full list over here. If you you can also choose the organization that you want as well. Um, and it'll pull up these lists, um, depending on what project type you're looking at, if you have more than one project type. I just want to do a basic uh, list of projects here. Uh, if you look here, there's only about five different spots. If you come down and select the organization, if there's more than one, or your project type, which I'll do personal injury, we have, give it one second, once it loads up, There we go. We have multiple other projects based on that actual template that there are different areas based on that actual template that I'll go through and pull in. So I still want to go through, do this general list of projects. Um, org name is all going to be the same. So I'll get rid of those. I do want to know the phase. So I'll keep that uh, first primary. I'll keep that as well, uh, along with pro project type. And let's see here. I want to do No, I want to go through and pull up my teams and I want to see, let's see here. I want to see the case manager first thing, see if those go through and pop up on there. So these are your columns. You have your available columns to select with and then these are the report columns. So these columns are going to be the ones that actually go through and appear in the report and you'll be able to go through and manipulate that data if you want as well. So I think this will work for us. Um, really what I'm wanting to look at is I want to look at client names. I really do want to see the phase that it's in because I want to kind of go through and count phases um, and see who the first primary is because we can also sort those as well as we want. So these are our columns. Um, they will show all of our data. We'll go to the choose criteria and this is where all the magic happens, so to say. You can go through and you can pick exactly what kind of cases you want. You can filter so that you get um, you can, one popular one is phase. You can find phases that are in, you know, different different phases here. You can go say ones that are not in there as well. So for this one though, I, do, I don't wanna really use uh, project filters. I, I except for, uh, I do wanna keep out, or I do wanna include archive projects just for fun. So we'll go through and I'll run our report. Give it a second there. Perfect. So we have all of our different cases right there. And I want to go through and I want to um, save this as project list with template. Because we're going to create a quick little template as well. And you want to make sure you don't go through and click save a bunch of times. Because if you do, uh, you'll get duplicates. And then you'll have to go through and you'll have to archive those layers, um, which is just a pain. So it does take some time or a little bit of time. Sometimes uh, you just have to be a little bit patient with it. 
Okay, so here I have my project when it's now saved. If I go to select reports, that'll appear there. Um, if I want to save it a div as a different report, if I want to do duplicates or I want two different templates with the same uh, base columns and criteria, I can do that as well. You can also export to Excel, a Word, set up my auto reports, share reports, or I can archive the report from here. So I want to go through and I want to do, I do want to create a template. So first I'll download this uh, as a regular Excel file without messing with the template, just because I want to see what it goes through and it looks like. And so pretty simple, gives us a list. Um, this is our sandbox. So there's only so many cases in there uh, and they're not going to be, they're not super organized like a lot of uh, your firms will be. So, but we can still go through and we can work with this data. So this is our project list template. And I do want to come to the export options and I do want to generate a default template because we want to go through and we want to make some edits so that it automatically saves. So we can see here, this is our template. It doesn't have any of the data. It just has what's where things are going to pull. Uh, you have the name, phase, first primary, case manager, first name. And then here's the actual data. And the reason I'll pull both is sometimes if I want to filter for a specific person's name or something like that in my auto report, um, I know what their name appears on in FileVine as well. But here I want to go through and I just want to create a short little table because I want to see how many phases are in there. For this one, I'll create a new uh, sheet. I'll call it case count by phase. And I'm going to name this one data just so that it's cleaner and it's easier to read. So I'll create a, just a quick little table and I want to see just the phase and I want to see the count. Okay, so I'm, I could go through and I could figure out exactly what all the different phases are if I knew them by memory. If you have a lot, that's definitely, definitely difficult. So I'll just go through and I'm going to go to data advanced. I'm going to copy all of these to a different location. I'll copy here for now. And I want unique records only. Perfect. And let's switch these two around so it's the first tab. Here's our phase. And then we can go through and you can either do this with a table or without a table. I prefer a table just because this is a reference material for me. And then this way I only have to do, I only have to do the function ones. So I'll format this as a table, press headers, and I want to count, use the count if function. And I want to pick for counting phase. There we go. So there it shows zeros, but it should be good. Do you want to double check? Count if yeah, two admin. And could also in your template pull those over and pull them down. I just like to be able to move and manipulate the data while I'm in Excel as well. So we have our new template. <clears throat> Let's save this on the desktop. And I'm just gonna project list template, save it there, come back to my file line and I'm gonna upload a new template. It's on my desktop. Give that a quick second. And there we go. It'll automatically pop up. I can go through and you can sort and filter and everything like that. So that's the quick project phase works well for project counts. I do want to 
come back here and show a, a task, um, a task report. If you, there are a lot of columns in here. If I want to go through and search for a specific type of, or type of task, come tasks that are not complete, we can get rid of a completed name, a completed date. Uh, I want to search for auto tasks, so I'll go through and I'll remove those as well. And the biggest thing when you're searching for tasks, a lot of times you're going to want to see complete tasks or not complete tasks. Add this uh, task or this filter on there. I want to see tasks that are not complete um, and just kind of see uh, which ones are outstanding right now. So 113. Um, I am on the Vine Skills account, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to. No, I don't want comments. I want. Let's see here. Well, I guess I am on the on that account, so I can go through and do assigned to username. Um, and I want to say it is. Let's see. Let's see if this works. Truthfully, I don't know exactly. Oh, there we go. So Vine Skills is our username. And then there, I can see what's all assigned to me. Super simple, can do this for each team member as well. Um, a third report I'd like to look at is the, we'll do liens. I have gone through and I do have my personal injury template. So we'll go through and just be looking at that. Um, I wanna know, in this report, I wanna go through and see, I have, I wanna go, I'm requesting finals on liens, uh, working with different providers. And I wanna see what all liens were still out of the standing from a certain company. So I'm gonna go through and find my data. Let's see, I want final lien receive date because on our template, when you receive it, um, a final lien, you go through and get the date. I wanna go through and I wanna choose criteria. And I wanna look for, let's see, I'm gonna have to look to see what it's called. Go to our test project. It is good to go through and look to see uh, exactly where all the information lives. If you know where the information lives in FileVine, it makes things a lot easier. So I'm looking for the lien holder. And we already have, we have the lien holder first name, so that works. And I want to search for Optum specifically, so I'm just going to put contains um, this way that it can go through and it can find every every lien holder with the name, including Optum. It doesn't have to be a perfect match. I, I prefer contains unless I know exactly what I was looking for. And I'll run the report there. And I'm able to go through and I'm able to pull up all of the current Optum liens we have. And I can see that they all have final lien receive dates or blank. Could also filter by that as well. It's really helpful if you're having to, you know, work with one one provider um, or lien holder, having to go through and reach out to them if you need to update a bunch of different cases at one time or get updates from them. Uh, this is a good way to be able to locate those. Hope this helps.